Yo, what's up everybody? It's Brilly, and today I'm going to show you how to animate the tune shaders we created in my previous tutorial. If you haven't watched the two previous tutorials that I did, one breaking down the shading lines like we see here, and the other one breaking down the shader itself, you'll want to make sure that you go back and watch those because I'm not going to go over the steps on building that aspect of the material. So let's start by opening up our material and we will go into the node editor. Now I'm going to start by animating the lines themselves that we've created. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to take this transform node here. All right. And this is deriving essentially our diffuse and it's giving a nice little front edge. And it's also giving kind of the contour and inside crevice edge to um, our material. And that's what we're going to start to animate first. So inside of our node editor, if we go into whatever you're using to kind of create that texture and breaking up that edge, we're using a noise shader here from my previous demo. And if you go into the transform tab here, we are going to want to keyframe the X value, maybe the Y value, and maybe even the rotational value. Basically, you want to come up with a distance that you're keyframing so we don't see the texture just kind of sliding around. Um, I don't know if there's a way of like changing the seed of this noise. If there was, that would honestly work really well. But the octane noise, I don't see just a simple like seed change. Otherwise, I would highly recommend just like keyframing that. Um, so I added a transform node onto this and I'm going to kind of just move its position around and that's going to work really good. Um, I'm also going to animate on twos for this. So every second frame is when it's going to change. That texture will change. So there will be a hold frame in there. And the other thing that I did is that you'll see that my actual project here is set to 12 frames per second. So in our node editor, we'll go into the transform tab and we're first going to make a keyframe on the position of X movement. But since I want to animate on twos, I'm going to go to frame one and also set a keyframe there with no change in the value. And then at frame two, I'm going to change this value. And again, I'm just kind of making up input numbers here that I think will be a big enough change that we don't see much of a difference because we want this to be really kind of frame steppy. And so I don't want to see like a smooth transition of a texture sliding across the surface. And so there's no kind of number that will be too big because it's going to just jump from one frame to the next. And so um, I will lay down a keyframe at frame 20. Now, if we right click this and go to animation, show track, and we come in here to our dope sheet, you'll see that we've got our three keyframes laid out. Now, if I just go to key and cycle, and I have offset checked on, um, the copies will just be very dependent on the duration of your timeline. And so I'll say, okay, now let's just go into our F curve editor and just double check that everything looks correct. And so I will frame selected and that's perfect. So now it's animating on twos here and offsetting and increasing by 20 on every two frames. Now all we got to do, because I would probably am going to want to transfer this animation to maybe the Z rotation. You can actually rotate on Z and maybe the position in Y as well. So that's going to be done really simply. Um, if you just right click on that parameter, you go to animation and you say copy track. You can then go animation, paste track and do the same thing here. Animation, paste track. I'm just trying to give it enough variety and change in position that we don't feel like the texture is just sliding over the surface. Awesome. So that will do the animation on that edge. All right. Now the next thing that we want to do is animate the texture itself. So for this, let's hop into After Effects. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to take some of your kind of like different sketches or whatever surface that you want to have on there. And so I have still the kind of graphite pencil one. And so you're gonna bring this in, let's create a new composition with it. You'll want to make sure that once again, your frame rate is set up to, to 12. And we'll come in here and I will go two frames in. And I will zoom into this and at the second frame, it will jump to something else. And so all I got to do for this one, I duplicate the same layer, offset it, and I'm going to change the scale of it. And now for this, I'm just going to jump back between two frames, really. And I want, since the lines are going on kind of a diagonal here, I don't want the lines to change diagonal directions. 
Um, so I always kind of want them flowing in the same direction. So if I change this to negative 100, you'll see it just kind of mirrors it. Oh, I have to change both to negative 100. There we go. And so now you'll see that it just kind of flips it kind of upside down and left and right and gives us just a slight offset here. And so I'll just come in here and I'll complete our timeline. Now we are going to export out and render out an uh, image sequence from this. So we'll come up to our composition and say add to render queue and in our render queue we're just going to render out a png sequence so set that to png and then set your desired location now i'm playing with a mixture of two different types of sketch kind of patterns different like graphite pencil patterns and so you'll do the same thing yet again now this one since they're mostly they're vertical and horizontal here i can kind of play around a little bit more with the kind of how many frames this one will last so um, it is already set to 12 frames a second, so I can cancel that. And once again, I'm just gonna go down two frames within my timeline and I'll end that there, bring this down and we'll duplicate this. And I'll move that down and we'll change the scale here. Now I can say negative 100, positive 100 and I'll duplicate it, move this down. I'll change the scale here to positive 100 and negative 100 and then I'll duplicate this and move this down and I'll change this scale to negative 100 and negative 100 there we go so now we've got four separate textures just kind of jumping around there every two frames and I'll end that and we'll do the same exact thing we'll add this to our render queue and we'll set this up as a PNG sequence say okay and set up the proper file location and we'll hit render now we'll head back inside of Cinema 4D and let's begin to move around in our node editor for that material. Okay, so you can see I kind of have these all lined up. I have three different image textures. Here's the one that's kind of more vertical and horizontal hatching. And then this was kind of the more textural based one that had them going more onto a bit of a line. So let's navigate to our folder that will contain all of our kind of sketch lines here this is the image sequence it doesn't matter which one in this hierarchy here you pick it doesn't matter what frame it will organize them and understand that they're they are in fact in an image sequence uh, but you do need to go into the animation tab it will update most of the time for you already um, you can hit calculate you can see it's not getting the frame rate correct so i'll just put that to 12. i want mine to loop because it's only you know um, you know, seven, eight frames here overall, right? So eight frames total, because it does count frame zero as a frame. So it's got eight frames within here. And so once it does that, it's going to loop back over again. And I'm just gonna repeat that same step again and again. So I'll come in here, I'll import my next image sequence, select any frame, say no there, and we'll go into the animation, make sure it's calculated, make sure you get 12, make sure that's on loop. And we'll do this here one more time. So I'll come back in here, select, open, no, and go into animation, calculate, and we'll hit 12. And this is all set to loop. Perfect. So that's it. Now this is all set up to kind of render this out. So let's go into our settings here and I'll set up something so we can see this in fact rendered. I have already done a couple tests and let's render it and see what we've got. So here we go. It's still rendering out, but you can see already, we've got kind of a really nice look here, really kind of organic movement and the uh, cell shading is working. So there you go. That is how you can animate the kind of sketch lines that we did, as well as the shading lines that we did to give your art and your 3D a more illustrative kind of quality to them.